it probably does. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll start quickly because I'm already quite late. <laughs> Uh, after the display port and actually also the Thunderbolt board failed to actually get picture on this thing. We're back to VGA, which always works. Yay! Um, all right. Uh, my name is Christian. I work for Red Hat in the desktop hardware enablement group. Um, how do I get the next slide? Yeah, what is the Thunderbolt anyway? I'm going to be really fast now. Um, it's according to Intel the USB C that does it all, which is already very confusing because I said Thunderbolt and now I said USB C. Um, and I think that's probably uh, going to happen the next five years for a lot of people, especially sysadmins and stuff, because it's actually the same port. This little, this newish port is also on the Nintendo Switch and everything. Um, and it can be a USB-C, plain USB-C port, but it can also be a Thunderbolt port. Um, and normally you can distinguish them if there's a little error next to it, a little flash. Yes, Hans? What is a plain USB? Like there, there is, there are ports out there, laptops out there that have only a USB-C port that ha don't have a Thunderbolt port. Two or one? Uh, yeah. Two or a 3.1 Gen 1 or 3.1 Gen 2? I don't know. Only host or only device? Exactly. Does it do USB power delivery? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you can distinguish them by the little icon that is next to them if there's space for all the icons. <laughs> anyway, so if it's an actual Thunderbolt 3 port, you will have a little uh, bolt next to it. And if it's a Thunderbolt 3 port, it can, uh, it's very fast. It can do up to 40 uh, gigabits per second. Uh, it can support up to three, uh, four PCI uh, express lanes. Sometimes, not on all chips, there's also, this is also up to, so you know, it's also up to eight display port lanes. And it always supports USB 3.1 if it's a Thunderbolt 3 device. Uh, and you can daisy change up to six devices, and then it's done. Um, it supports charging your laptop, um, and the devices can use up to 15 watts. And um, there are people, I mean, the most use case, I think, for now, which uh, the, the hardware is mostly available for, is, is docks, docks, or docks, like, like this guy here. This is a Thunderbolt free docks for Lenovo. Um, but there's also, for example, from Razer, uh, an external enclosure where you can have a GeForce graphics card for all your Ethereum mining. Um, how do I get the next thing? Yeah. Um, so the confusing part about the connection modes is that the one port can be actually four ports. Um, it can be an USB-only mode, which if you connect a USB plug, a USB device in it, the Thunderbolt port actually switches into USB-only mode and it acts as a normal USB port. If you plug in the display port uh, device, then it can be also just a display port. Um, and it can also be a combination of display port and USB. And only if you have the right cable, the cable also needs to have a little flash thingy on it, like this, like a little. Only if you have the right Thunderbolt USB-C cable, whatever you call it, um, then you get actually the, the Thunderbolt controller into its native Thunderbolt mode, where you get the high speed and um, the, the full you know, the PCI Express bridges to the device. And you get all the super nice features and, uh, yeah, including of course, because it's PCI Express, uh, DMA, which means that someone can just read your memory or write into your memory or whatever, right? Um, and it took Intel apparently three revisions uh, to realize this problem and or <laughs> the uh, CIA leaks or something. Um, so in uh, Thunderbolt 3, we actually have security modes. And the security modes are like there's four of them and you can set them in the BIOS uh, in most computers. Um, not all four might be supported. I think Lenovo start, started uh, not em enabling the none mode anymore because none mode is basically legacy mode, which means that you don't get any security. Um, and then you have display port only, which only gets a display port if it actually is working. Um, and then there's two secure modes, which means the, the user mode and the secure mode. And in both of these modes, in user space, we actually have to tell the device to like work. We have to like, you know, you plug the device in the di device re registers within the kernel, but we have to say like, okay, we, we want this device to be activating and only then we get the PCI express lanes and only then we get the malicious attacks. Hopefully not, but maybe. Um, and the difference between the user mode and the secure mode is that uh, in the secure mode, you can also supply a, a key to the device, 
which then you can later use to re-identify the device. So like if someone fiddles with, with your dock and installs something in there, oh, then you know, hopefully this is get caught by, this, by the secure mode or replaces your dock you know, with a different one. Um, and on Windows, uh, you know, the land of dialogues, when you actually plug in a new um, Thunderbolt device, you get a bunch of dialogues like, okay, there's a new Thunderbolt device. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to connect it? Don't you want to <coughs> connect it? Um, and, you know, our designers, I mean, the GNOME designers thought that this was a very, very bad idea because what most of the time happens, people just click on it because it will make your Beamer work or it will make your whatever. And, you know, the presenter is already in a hurry because nothing works. And then, of course, you click everything. You click, okay, okay, okay. Um, anyway, so how, does, how do we do this um, in, in, uh, in Linux land? Um, we have the kernel, which gained Thunderbolt support, or well, Thunderbolt 3 support in 4.13. Um, it exposes the devices via SysFS and UDEV. Um, there's a small system daemon which gets activated um, by UDEV rules. And then we have the GNOME shell and the GNOME control center talking to it. The, it's a DBus API, so other people can talk to it too. Um, I'm not sure if it actually happened yet. And there's a command line tool if you want to actually fiddle around with the nitty gritty stuff, which I don't expect most people to actually want to do. How much time is left? Can I slow down? No, 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 I have to be fast up. <laughs> okay, this is the kernel interface. Not so interesting because, uh, you know, I mean, normally you shouldn't actually use it. But, you know, just of interest, if you plug a device in, it will show on, up under Sysbar Thunderbolt. And there's one file ca called authorized. If you just put a one in there, the device will work. You know, it will connect the, the PCI Express lanes and everything. And then for the secure mode, this is how you would, on the command line, do it. You know, you, you create a key, um, you write it into the, the device. The key will actually get stored in the non-volatile RAM on, this, on the device. And then you, with, the, with the one, you actually authorize the, the device and store the key in the device. And then on the next connect, you supply the key and only then if the re device responds with the right challenge to the key, the device will be activated by the kernel. Um, just a very quick inter intermezzo. There's also uh, firmware for the Thunderbolt host controllers and uh, also for the devices. So I have a Dell dock to test at, at, at in Munich. And also there, the cable actually has its own firmware, so you can update your cable firmware. Um, and this works all, I mean, this is all done. It, there's a plugin for the Linux firmware vendor service and for FWFD, and it will, you know, you can magically via GUI update your cable. Um, so the little daemon that I wrote in the last few months um, is just exposing the SysFS, where, where it's a very small daemon actually, via DBus API. And the main use of this daemon is basically for the, for the GNOME shell to, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, to speak to it or for other clients to speak to it. Um, you can use it to authorize and enroll the device from, from user space. Uh, it uses Paul Kit and it ha once a device initially was enrolled, it has a little database, it's just files in the file system um, to remember them. And then on the next time you, you plug the device in, it will just automatically, like even before the like, GNOME shell is loaded or something, will automatically authorize the device. If you said it should do that. Um, Exactly. So the, the Debus API is also very simple. So it has only, you can get the devices, you can enroll a device, you can forget the device anymore. And there's one little thing there, which is called the Fortify mode. Um, so normally, yeah, this is not so super, I skipped this. Uh, yeah, there's also the command line, which I, you know, because that's the same thing, authorize devices, enroll devices, list devices, modify, modify for changes. But the, the way we normally think what users gonna do with it is that it just magically works. So if you are logged in and your session is unlocked and you plug a device in and you are also the admin, like you are in the wheel group, then we will basically ask policy kit, but there's a special policy code that will check kit rule that will check that you are uh, if you're an admin. And if you are an admin, it will just automatically authorize the device. And if not, you will get a, the usual policy kit dialog, like, you know, wanting to enter your password. And if you have the admin password, you know, you can go and also will authorize the device. And then remember it for the future. Um, if you're not logged in or the session is locked, then we don't do anything because it might be someone else trying to steal your main, main memory and, you know, by just plugging a device in. 
Um, and what we do is we, we throw up a dialogue, basically, yeah, like this, where you say, ah, there's a new Thunderbolt device um, that has been attached to your computer, and what you need to do um, is to basically replug the device. So there's not even, like in the GUI, there's no way to actually afterwards authorize the device via click or something. What you need to do is physically take the, the cable, unplug and replug it while the session is unlocked, which is what our designers came up with, the best solution to not you know, have another dialogue that says authorize the device. Um, yep. There's also a little user, like a little snake thingy icon when, when something's actually happened in the Thunderbolt bus. Because for the Dell dock, for example, it takes up to 10 seconds from you plugging the device in until your network card in the, the dock is actually working. Because, you know, network management has to, has to do with magic. And you know, the, the cable has to first be authorized. And after the cable is authorized, the dock has to be authorized. And this, you know, like this takes forever. Yeah? That's a small question. Uh, how do they do the authorization? So what protocol basically uh, algorithms are used? So the, the authorization, you mean if, you, if you're in secure mode? For example, to, to access it. You, you can give it a key, right? Yes, you give it a key, yeah. How does it work? So you give it a key, and then it's basically like hash, hash something. You know, you have the key in the device stored, and you challenge the device with some random data, and it sends you like some HMAC, whatever thing back, and the kernel does the same thing and compares the hashes. And if they match, it's the same device. Okay, they use HMAC. Yeah. There you go. Um, and then there's also a little control center thing which basically allows you to manage the devices. So, you know, where you can remove the device again once you've done it. And it will also help you, like, once if you, if you are plugged in a device while, while the screen was locked, you will also, you know, find a more descriptive, hopefully, message there. Like, when you click on the little notification thing, you can go there and it will tell you that you have to reconnect the device. Um, yeah. And that's it. Yeah, made it. <laughs> There's not much time for questions, but I think, yeah. One very short one. If you want to share a, uh, um, a Thunderbolt device between multiple uh, computers, so each of them has its own key, is this? There's, yeah, they have, they have more. The, the, the non volta RAM has support for more than one key, yeah. But I think I haven't tried it. I, I used like four or five computers and it still worked. But I, I guess at some point it will override the keys. And, but I've three or four at least work.